Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing a pen review of a pen that I've wanted to review for quite a while. This is one of those pens that uh, is iconic. Uh, it's not the flagship model of this brand, but it is right up there uh, and held in very high esteem by pen users the world over. That pen is the Pelican M800. Now, I have here the green stripe model uh, and with the typical sort of black cap and gold trim. This pen was uh, provided to me for review by uh, Larry Post, the Australian stationery uh, fountain pen website, uh, and uh, through their loaner program. So Larry Post have this loaner program, which I think is a fabulous idea. For a small fee uh, and putting down a refundable bond, you can hire or loan uh, a pen, a higher end pen uh, from their range um, for a couple of weeks just to see what it's like. And of course, if you return it in good condition, then you get your money back, uh, the, the bond back. This is a really great program. I'm not sure why there aren't more programs like this. I'm sure there are others, but this is the best one I've found here in Australia. And it gives you a real life experience of the pen. Buying online, you don't get to hold the pen. You don't get to feel what it's like to write with. Uh, you don't get to have that sensory experience of the pen. Whereas with an, uh, a brick and mortar store, of course, you get to hold the pen and try it out. So it's really great to have a program like this where you can pick up a pen, hold it, write with it for a couple of weeks, get to know the pen and decide whether you want to outlay that sort of money because we're not talking small money for a Pelican M800. In Australia, and I'm, the, I'm quoting the prices on the Larry Post website, it's $795 full retail price or their price uh, is $549. So $549 is quite... Uh, a bit of money for a pen. Uh, it's certainly more than I'm comfortable spending for the most part on a pen. So let's talk about the pen. Uh, firstly, it comes in a cardboard sleeve like this with the Pelican uh, logo on it there. Uh, and in that is the uh, the box, which I think is a great box. It's so sturdy, you, there's gonna be no damage to this uh, in shipping. Uh, and in the box, the pen comes in uh, this sort of fake leather, faux leather sleeve, which I really like, um, and I think it would be great to carry a couple of pens around in um, after afterwards. But it's also a great way to store the pen. It's not bulky. If you don't want to keep the boxes, but you want to keep the pen protected, this is a really lovely way of doing it. So let's cover the parts of the pen. Now, as I said, this is the. It's got gold trim and the standard sort of black clip and the green stripes there. Uh, it's got the piston turning knob on the end, which is also black. Uh, and this particular pen, uh, I have here in the medium nib, which is an 18 karat gold uh, medium nib. Uh, and I think it's a, a, a really nice nib. Uh, and medium is my preferred line width, uh, even on these slightly broader uh, Pelican pens. One thing I love about this pen is the threads to cap it. It screws to cap, which is my preferred method, and in one turn, it's on and off, and it's beautifully smooth. Uh, the other thing I love about this pen, which is my preferred system, is the piston filler. Uh, it's a really lovely smooth mechanism, uh, and you can see through the barrel just enough uh, to see where your ink uh, is at, uh, which is a really nice uh, touch. So in terms of the branding of the pen, you do have the little Pelican logo on the top, um, obviously, I, I consider this clip to be branding. Um, it is one of the you know the iconic features of the Pelican pen, um, and it's a good clip. Uh, the other branding on the pen is around the centre band where it says Pelican Souverain, Germany. Uh, so it's minimal branding, but with a pen that's this iconic and this iconic a design, you don't need much more branding than that. So let's talk about uh, the specifications of the pen, the stats. So size. This is 141 millimeters when it's capped. It's 165 when posted, and it does post securely, but it does make it quite a long pen. Uncapped, it's 128, and this is actually how I prefer to write with it. It's a good length. I don't think this would be a problem in anybody's hand, but also it, fa it may means that the weight is slightly more towards the nib uh, than when it's capped uh, posted, which I prefer as my sort of where I like the balance to be when I'm writing. The pen weighs 30 grams, of which 
Uh, 22 are in the barrel and 8 is in the cap. So it's a well-weighted, nicely balanced uh, and beautifully thought out pen. The diameter of the section is just about perfect. It's about 11 millimeters and even those threads there and the little step down off them, hardly noticeable, but that little flare at the end there just makes it nice to be able to hold uh, and know where you're going with the pen. Let's do some size comparisons. So. First up is uh, a pen that I think most people will be familiar with. It's the Lamy Safari. So you can see that the pen size is actually very similar. The Pelican's a little bit uh, girthier, but the length is about the same. Another uh, Pelican pen, which is the, uh, this is the, I think the M250, which is the same size as the uh, M200 and 205. Uh, so you can see it's a, it's a substantially larger uh, pen than that. And then the last pen uh, is a Diplomat Aero. Um, which is a slightly girthier pen, and as you can see, very comparable uh, in size. Let's just look at two of these uh, uncapped so you get an idea. So here's the Pelican, and here is uh, the Lamy, both uh, uncapped. Um, and as you can see, once again, size-wise, uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty similar. So what do I have to say about the writing experience with this pen? Well, it's great. You know, it's a Pelican pen. They're not there well made and they're, they, they're tuned and they have great nibs, so you are going to have a good writing experience with this pen. I'll show you in the writing sample, but for me, one of the biggest downsides that I found with this pen, and it's hardly a downside, is that it's just not that wet. I could get it tuned to be wetter. It's certainly not a pen that I personally would tune. I'd send it away to be uh, tuned by a professional, uh, but I'd like it to be just a, a little bit wetter. There is also a slight a uh, bit of extra feedback uh, on the diagonal upstrokes from right to left, which uh, as a left-handed writer, that's an angle that we come across a fair bit in our writing. It's gonna be less of an issue for a right-hander uh, as you pull the pen across the page as opposed to pushing it. Uh, but yeah, it's something that I've noticed and something that I would get fixed uh, if this were my pen. So let's see uh, this pen in action. This is M800, as I said, this is a medium 18 karat nib. And it is a lovely nib. Um, it's smooth. It's certainly wet enough. Um, it's certainly not a gusher. I, pre I prefer my pens to be a little bit on the wetter side. Uh, and, you know, that, that's just my pr personal uh, preference and taste. As I said, there's a little bit of extra feedback on these sort of diagonal uh, upward left to right, uh, right to left uh, strokes, uh, but that's not a, a deal breaker in any way. Now, in terms of line variation, I'm not going to push this because this isn't my pen, but it is a slightly springy nib, so you can uh, get a little bit of, of movement out of it, but certainly not flex, um, and it's not stubby or anything like that, so just be gentle with the nib. So yes, it's a perfectly pleasant nib, as I, oh, I actually forgot to mention that I have this inked with Pilot of uh, Shin Ryoku, uh, which is a fabulous green ink with a bit of red sheen there if you can catch it. Um, and it's a nice ink in this pen. It's not the wettest ink, so um, when I, I did try this with a couple of other inks, um, including a uh, Detrimentous ink, which I find particularly wet, and I still found it wasn't as wet as, say, even, say, the Diplomat Aero, uh, which uh, is also here a medium nib. Uh, which I have with Aurora Black at the moment. Um, so you can see, the, firstly, that the line um, is noticeably uh, wider on the, um, on the Pelican, uh, but also this uh, pen is just a little bit uh, wetter, and it's not known as a particularly wet pen either. So let's do a quick summary. This is a fabulous pen. If I owned this pen, I'd be very, very happy with it. As I said, I'd probably send it away to get it made just a little bit wetter, perhaps a little uh, smooth out that, that um, upward stroke. But really, it's a fabulous pen. It's been a joy to write with. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a perfectly functioning, beautiful pen. It is a statement pen. These Pelican pens, you know, they're a status pen, like a Mont Blanc or any of those higher-end luxury pens. When you're paying this sort of money for a pen, you are saying something about 
the pen, as well as your own taste and your own uh, enjoyment of the item. Is it worth the money? Well, that is up to you. Uh, would I spend this much money on this pen? I think there are pens I'd prefer to spend this much money on before I got this pen. This is on my wish list, this, uh, this model, uh, this pen, uh, and I'd probably get a broad nib. So if you're spending upwards of 500 Australian dollars, up to 800 Australian dollars on a pen, are you getting anything more than you would from a pen that is $100? Or in the case of, say, the Twisby 580, much less than $100? Some pens at this price point, you notice the difference. With this, I didn't notice the difference. Um, well, I noticed the difference, but I didn't notice the value in difference. At five times the price, six, up to seven times the price of a Twisby 580, this pen, it's a big step up. And as one of the, the well-known uh, pen retailers states in a lot of his videos, there is a law of diminishing return on pens. Um, but the Twisby 580 is a steel nib and a very good steel nib as is something like the Diplomat Aero, which is a third, even a quarter the price of this pen, and you're getting fabulous writing experience. So if you want to invest in these pens, in a pen like this, or the M1000, or a Montblanc 146, or 149, or any of these sort of iconic pens, try it out first. Try something like this pen through the loaner program at Larry Post. See if it's the pen for you. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification uh, button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Uh, please feel free to drop me a message at any of the platforms listed below. And in the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.